Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Harmon and I wanted to share with you a quick video tutorial on how to get a full white background on a portrait without a lot of gear or post-processing that you have to do. We're going to run through this as fast as I can show you. Hopefully it'll make sense and help you out. Let's head over to the computer and I'll show you. Alright, so first off I want to explain kind of the setup of what we had. So. I had a uh, Canon 7D Mark II camera. I had a Tamron 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens. And I set the settings to be 1 200th of a second. That's almost the fastest I could go with the 7D Mark II. 250 of, 250th of a second is this flash seek speed. So after that, I start seeing black bars and things where the flashes aren't covering like you want. So I, I decided to go f 200. That way I can hand hold, not have it be shaky, get really good sharp focus. The other thing that I did was had two flashes. There was one down below my son here at, uh, at his feet, full power. And there was another one that I had kind of back towards me that was off camera and also set at full power uh, about, uh, about his shoulder height. Then we have this reflector over here. It's actually, it's, a, it's not a reflector, it's a diffuser. Uh, I tried a reflector and I, it was too much light reflection on him. It really overpowered that side. So I, uh, I went with the diffuser. It was a little softer kind of reflection. didn't reflect quite as much. And that was it. That's, that's the whole setup. And we did it pretty quick. Went into his room. This is white closet doors behind him. But this right here is kind of a almost a beige color, a tan kind of thing. It's definitely not white. And yet it looks pretty white because the light that's there, this flash that was behind him was pointed just straight up, full power. And that was all with the intention of trying to get a blown out background because that's what we wanted, an all full white blown out background. All right, so now this is pretty well straight out of camera. I did do some settings, highlights. I, I did do some slider stuff, but it wasn't much. And now it's time to take it over into Photoshop. So I'm gonna hit Command E or Control E on the um, PC. And we're going to go into Photoshop. And there it is. Okay. So now the first thing that I do when I go into Photoshop, as I'm editing a photo, I make a copy of the background so that I get back. <laughs> I don't want to have to go back into Lightroom. Like after I've done some edits and go, oh, I don't like where I ended up and not be able to compare or, or look at the original or use the original again. Or if I want to compare, I like to be able to have those backgrounds. So I make a background. In this case, I probably won't really need it or use it, but it's just a first thing that I like to do as a kind of an insurance policy. <laughs> and so that I could look at things, but I'm gonna go hide that layer because I'm not gonna to wanna to see what's underneath it. Now I want to cut him out. Now you could use either paint or an eraser and try to take out this stuff that's so distracting. Obviously we didn't get a full white background. There's shadows that happened and and you could have probably called probably could have got that got rid of that if I had more flashes set up I could do a better job of actually getting the background completely disappear but it was a really simple setup I did it really really quick that was kind of the objective I didn't want to spend a lot of time doing this and I'm really glad the technique works out that's what I was hoping to show you you don't have to take a ton of time to set this up you can use a really fast post-processing technique technique and get as good a picture maybe even better so it, this actually also works if you don't have just a full white background that you want you can use the same kind of technique make sure you get really good lighting on the subject especially behind them and it becomes really easy to cut them out of the picture. And not a full cut, I'm not gonna cut them and paste them onto a background. We're gonna use some masking to get there. And that's, that's kind of the point of the technique here is to do some masking. So let's go build our mask. We're gonna pick the quick selection tool here. And I'm gonna just kind of start at the bottom and I'm gonna start selecting him. And when I'm selecting him, we don't have to be super careful. I am going after a full white background. So the area in between his fingers here, I don't care if that gets selected because it's already fully white, right? And I'm just gonna go up here and select. Same with the hair. I don't really care if I get a little bit extra or even a lot extra. I want, I want all of him and the white's what I'm going after, so I don't have to be quite as careful. If I was gonna put him on a non-white background, if I was gonna add my own thing, I would uh, have to be more careful. All right, so I went too far. You can see now that pretty much the whole scene got selected. 
uh, Photoshop decided, oh, he's trying to get the whole thing, and I don't like that. So I'm going to hold down mine, Alt, sorry, Alt, and I'm going to just kind of go back around to the areas that I don't want, like this. And that's deselecting too much again. And now that I've deselected Lightroom, or sorry, Photoshop is not going to reselect the areas that I've already said I don't want very much. It's, it's getting smarter every time I refine the selection a little more. So we're going there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in here because it's having a really hard time figuring out what we want there. And there, that looks pretty good now. Now that's much better. And we could do some more work. In fact, I'm going to do it just to demonstrate kind of the technique of how you would do it on a non, if you were going to put a non-white background in place. So you would want to select even probably just more than you want out of it. And um, so, so it's okay if it's a little extra beyond the hair, maybe a little bit more over here and get, get just a little bit tighter in there. Very good. Okay, now this, this will illustrate the point. So I'm going to hit this refine edge button. All right. Now you can see right here along these, as I'm zoomed in, it doesn't look too bad. If I were to, to paste in a white background, in fact, it's kind of showing an all white background right now. It doesn't look too bad, but it looks a little bit like I cut and paste him into the background. The standard Photoshop, oh, I can tell you did that kind of mistake. Refine Edge helps you to kind of defeat that. You can grab this Refine Edge brush. You just use this brush right here, and you're going to go along the edges of his hair. And what it's doing is just refining. It's going to find, refine the selection. It can kind of tell what you were selecting and what you weren't. And when I let go, you can see what happened is it doesn't look quite as stiff on the edges. There's not an, an exact edge there between the white and the hair. And that's exactly what you want. You want it to kind of melt. His hair needs to sort of melt into the background so that it doesn't look like it got cut and pasted into the thing to the, to the background. This does kind of a gradual selection. You're able to get some of this, but it's, it's fading into the background. It's more, kind of like a gradient selection there. And, and that makes it look more natural. And you could do that along all the edges too. If, if you were not doing a full background, a full white background, then you would worry about that. All right, so that's that's not bad because I've got pretty much just white in the areas. Oh, let's, whoops, let's change this there. That's better. I don't want that in there. Got this shirt. I might have to zoom in to make sure since I, I uh, got too much there. Okay, good. That's not bad. Probably should do a little tiny bit more of his arm here. And we don't want quite there. All right, that's that's looking pretty decent. All right, could do refine edge if we wanted to, but I think you get the idea. Now over here, I've got a little bit of, of gray selected. I'm gonna leave that because I wanna show you a technique. Should you have your mask be too much um, or even too little, I'm gonna show you the technique on how to kind of fix that afterwards. So I'm gonna leave that on purpose so we can do that. Now, now that what we're gonna do is we have to make our mask. With this selected, when I hit this create mask button here, it's going to put white everywhere that I had selected and black everywhere I didn't. And then in this area where I kind of did the refine edge, it's going to do like a gradient in between. You can't tell very well from the mask, but it's kind of going from white to black a little bit smoother than a straight edge, straight white to black, where here it's kind of more straight. All right, so let's go and fix the area that I purposely left too much done. And what I'm gonna do, since I'm on the mask right here, I have it selected, I'm gonna go over to the uh, paintbrush tool and I need to hide that area. It's too much got selected in the mask. So that's black. It's black to conceal, white to reveal. And so if I want to conceal what's here, whoops, then I'm gonna just grab that and I'm gonna paint away. I'm gonna paint black onto the mask which is gonna tell Photoshop that I actually don't want that to show through. And now it's pretty good. Obviously I could do that with this stuff too right here. All right, if you had too much selected, you could do that. If you had too little selected, if you cut off too much of something, uh, then you could go paint white and reveal. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with where that's at. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna grab the paint bucket tool and I'm gonna make sure that it's full white right there in the far farthest upper corner. I'm gonna paint the whole thing. All right, and then I'm gonna grab that layer and I'm gonna move it just below, and there you go. It is a perfect white 
background, nothing else showing. It looks like it was done with some nice, maybe muslin background with beautiful flash work. And it looks very much like it was on purpose, uh, done that way in camera. You can't really tell that I pasted him onto that background. And that's how it can look on non-white backgrounds too. Still use white flashes. You don't necessarily need to gel them or make them look that way. It looks really, really good to be able to, to use this technique for that. The other problem with this image was I was in just a little too tight. I should have been out just a little more when I apply the one-to-one -one square ratio for the Instagram profile that he wanted. There's not quite enough. His fingers get cut off. So I'd have to go, I had to go add a little bit up here of pure white to make it so that I could cut him out right. But when I was done, the way that it ended up right there, there's there's where the cutout was with the square pro, uh, ratio so that you could put it on Instagram and make it look just like you wanted. So that's it. That's my tutorial on how to get a full white background with very little gear or even post-processing technique. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did and you'd like more, I host a podcast episode called photo taco not an episode i host a podcast called photo taco and i'd love for you to go and subscribe and even leave me a review of the episodes of, so that i can improve the uh, podcast all the time thanks for joining me we'll catch you later